All right, friends, moving on to chapter eight. I'm multitasking again, feeding the baby and making macaroni. So we'll see how long I can uh, read the chapter for. Chapter eight, shh, whist. The king cobra circled the leafy mound. Its skin was olive brown, the color of the dead leaves, the color of the dead leaves. It had speckled yellow bands that ran around its scaly body. Back up, back up, go slow, Jack whispered to Annie. Jack picked up his bag and then, and they quietly stepped back until they got to the edge of the clearing. Now run! Jack and Annie took off, clutching his bag. Jack ran with little steps, trying not to lose his pointy slippers. After about a hundred yards, Annie came to a halt. Stop, stop, she grabbed Jack's arm. We shouldn't get too far away. Why not, said Jack. Penny, Penny, said Annie. We have to get the emergent, the, we have to get the emerald for Penny. Right, right, said Jack. Okay. He took a deep breath. First, we have to get calm. Jack took another deep breath. Then he pulled out their research book. Okay. Let's read about cobras. Jack opened the book and found a section about Indian wildlife. He read, The king cobra is one of the only snakes known to make a nest for its eggs. The nest is made of a mound of dead leaves. The cobra's scaly skin is the same color as the leaves, a good example of natural camouflage. So that mound of leaves was its nest, said Jack, and the cobra was probably a mother snake guarding her eggs. Go, bud. Hi. Uh, let's see. Guarding its eggs. How does that information help us? Said Annie. It doesn't, said Jack. He went on. King cobras cannot hear, but they have excellent vision and can feel vibrations. Is that funny? They will attack anything they see that gets too close to their nests. That's bad news, said Annie. Yep, really bad news, said Jack. He kept reading. When threatened, the king cobra flattened flattens its neck into a hood. A single bite from the snake contains enough venom to kill 20 men or a large elephant. Whoa, said Annie. That must be why Morning Breeze panicked and ran away. Jack closed the book. He shook his head. I don't see how we could possibly get, the, get close to that nest, he said. Then there's no way we can get an emerald rose for Penny, said Annie, unless we go back to the Great Mogul and ask for another one. And that's not going to happen, said Jack. Then how can we save Penny, asked Annie. Think of Penny. Jack thought about Penny. He would do anything for her. Okay, he said. There might be a way we could get the Emerald Rose. What if, what if we were really small? Yes, said Annie. The Cobra can't hear us, right? Said Jack. She can only see us and feel vibrations. So if we make ourselves small, maybe we can sneak back and get the Emerald without being seen. Yes, said Annie. Jack reached into his bag and pulled out the blue bottle. He and Annie both started at it. So how many sips does it should we take? Jack asked. One for ten minutes. Annie shook her head. Two for twenty. Okay, Jack took a deep breath. But just so you know, when we get when we get small, everything else will be huge, like flies and spiders. And spiders, Annie said in a small voice. Yeah, said Jack. Hey, you know what? You don't, you don't have to do this. I can do it by myself. It only takes one person to get the emerald. No, I'll go. You stay, said Annie. No way, said Jack. We'll both go. Good, said Annie. Jack held the bottle up to his lips. Okay, he said two sips. He took two quick sips, then handled, handed the, body, the bottle to Annie. Jack felt dizzy. He closed his eyes and hugged himself. He felt as if we were falling through a hole. Swiss. Suddenly, the forest was filled with chir chirping, whirring, crunching, and squeaking. Oh, wow, Annie said. Open your eyes. Jack opened his eyes. He and Annie were both small, very small. Their clothes and shoes in Jack's bag were all small, too. Hi, do you want some more? Yeah. Eat your macaroni. Oh, man, we got really small, said Jack. He looked around at the grass and the weeds and the mushrooms. They were all taller than he was. I think he shrunk to about six or eight inches. Close to the ground, the scrubby forest was awake and alive. Filled with the ripe smells of earth, noisy insect sounds, and the rustling and whispering of grasses and weeds. The dirt glittered as if he sparkled with flecks of silver. It's really beautiful, said Annie. Yeah, said Jack. Wildflowers look like elegant and luminous umbrellas with pale pink petals and silvery leaves. 
Berries were the size of apples. Look up, said Annie. Wow, said Jack. The tall trees of forests were like skyscrapers. It was hard to see what they ended, where they ended. Whoop! Something plopped down in the dirt beside Jack. Ah! Jack and Annie grabbed each other in terror. It was a giant insect, as long as Jack's arm. It had a flat brown body, six legs, and two sets of wings. It looked at them with huge goggle, google-like eyes. It waved its antennas and crept forward. Ah! Jack and Annie stumbled backward. The giant bug stopped. Then it rubbed its front wings together. The forest erupted with shrill chirping. Creak! 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 Jack covered his ears and laughed. The giant insect was a cricket. He knew a cricket wouldn't hurt them. The cricket pushed off the ground its long hind legs and leapt into the bushes. Look, said Annie, glancing up. A giant golden yellow butterfly hovered above, above her as if Annie were a flower. The butterfly touched down lightly on her head and opened its wings. Annie held her breath. She didn't move a muscle. She looked like she was wearing a wide yellow hat. So this is them really small. Does anybody see the butterfly? I don't know if I see the cricket. Let me see if I can. I don't see the cricket. Does anybody see it? I only see the butterfly that landed on Annie. The bu butterfly closed its wings and opened them and with a whispery sound fluttered deeper into the forest. Bzzz. A gigantic bee circled above Jack. Whoa, keep moving, buddy, Jack said, ducking and waving his hands. We're not flowers. The bee buzzed lazily away. Hey, we'd better hurry and get our emerald before we become our real size again, said Annie. All right, said Jack. Which way, asked Annie. Jack looked around. It was too hard to tell where they were. I remember the em emerald was shining in the sunlight. It, it looks sunny over there. Um, it looks sunny over there, said Annie. She pointed to a clearing. So let's creep through the shade toward the light, said Jack. Remember, the cobra can't hear us, but she can see us and feel our vibrations. So we have to stay hidden and step lightly. Hey, I wonder where the dad is, said Annie. <laughs> Don't ask, said Jack. Don't think about it. We have enough to worry about. Come on, let's go. He and Annie crouched down and started creeping toward the sunlight. <laughs>